Hi, everyone. Welcome back to The Danny Show. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Today, I have a very, very special guest. His name is Tehran Wangasri. So, Tehran Wangasri is a half-Black, half-Iranian American who was born in Washington, D.C. He is the bridge between many different worlds, the diaspora and America, put in academia. His father is Iranian and his mother is of African descent. His mom named him Tehran to give him an identity that is blurred between both his cultures. Tehran has obtained a bachelor's degree in political science and communication, a master's in economics, and a JD degree in law from George Mason University. Tehran Mangasri's journey to success is a testament to his resilience and determination. Born with an innate passion for entertainment, he embarked on his path to stardom with unwavering conviction and a relentless pursuit of excellence. Through years of dedication and hard work, Tehran honed his craft as a stand-up comedian, captivating audiences with his unique blend of humor, charisma, and raw authenticity. His ability to infuse every performance with genuine emotion and relatable, and, and relatable experiences has earned him widespread acclaim and a devoted fan base. Beyond his thriving career in comedy, Tehran Mongastri has also made a significant impact as an actor and television, and television host. With notable appearances in film and television productions, he has showcased his versatility and range as a performer, effortlessly transitioning between comedic roles and more dramatic performances. As a television host, Tehran's magnetic personality and infectious enthusiasm have endeared him to viewers around the world, making him a trusted and beloved figure in the entertainment industry. And out of now, it is with great honor and privilege to introduce to you all Tehran Wong Asri. How are you doing, Tehran? Yo, first of all, I need to start taking you everywhere I go. Just that <laughs> my intro. Like when I'm going into a restaurant, it's like, Danny, go first. You tell the whole world <laughs> what it is. And then I walk in with like horns blazing. I don't okay. even know where you got all that. How did you even get all that stuff? Where did you even? I, I told you I grew up watching you. Uh, you're my idol, man. So I, had Yo, to, I appreciate you, know... you. I appreciate you very much. Thank you for, for loving and enjoying that intro. I had that, you know, prepared since I was a, You're the a prince kid. of Toronto. You are the <laughs> prince of Toronto, my guy. Thank you, Prince. I uh, appreciate it, man. I really, really appreciate it. Um, so, yeah, I was telling you um, basically um, how I went to my dad's cousin's house. And she was telling me, like, Daniel, why don't you reach out to Tehran? I'm like, he's he's huge. I don't think he'll respond. So I tried going online the, the day after trying to find like maybe you have an agent or a con like you know a management team and I couldn't find anything so I said you know what let's just message him on Instagram let's see what happens and I prayed to God and God answered all my prayers and luckily you got back and I can't believe it man this not is even that first of all I have an agent a management team an agent team the whole team but when it comes to contacting the best thing just Instagram me like I I'm, I have <laughs> And that be caught up. I'm just like, yo, what up? <laughs> like, I'm just like, like, what up? You know? So, I, I didn't really know. I appreciate you. Then, you. Like, when people reach out yeah. and they're doing things like you're young, you're hustling, you're trying to put together something, I'm always about supporting, especially you, people uh, in my community. So I'm always down to support. And I'm really proud of you for even just reaching out, taking that initiative, being inspired <laughs> to do so. And obviously you have good taste. You think I'm good. So you have great oh, taste, Danny. Of course, yeah, of, course. of course, of course, you agree. Um, so to begin this interview, I wanted to know what made you pursue comedy and kind of make yourself well known in this media industry? Well, to be very honest, I wanted to go into politics and I wanted to go into law. That's why I went to school right. for all those years. But the more I went into all those things and I wanted to go into them for all the right reasons, because I wanted to help the world or make the world a better place or at least understand the world and be that bridge. And I realized that politics divides people, but comedy yep. unites people. If exactly. you're in a room full of people after a tragic event and you're crying, mm -hmm. in, even in a room full of people, you're still crying alone. But when mm -hmm. you're in a room full of people laughing, especially at some good comedy, we're all laughing together. So mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring people together and I felt like comedy was the best way to do that. Also comedy is, the platform that allows us to think the most. It, it gives us our philosophies in the modern day. Sure. No one's made us think about politics more than John Stewart or Trevor Noah. No one's made us think about race more than Dave Chappelle or Chris Rock. No right. one's made us think about just life more than Tiffany Haddish and Wanda Sykes. Like these comedians are the ones who actually are the ones allowing us to relate to one another, but most importantly, through one another. 
that's that's amazing to hear man so um speaking of you know john stewart and you know trevor noah um they're great you know talk show hosts and comedians who were your idols growing up well as far as comedy goes i think dave chappelle is dave chappelle. the best comedian i just mm -hmm. i love him i love how charismatic he is how polarizing he is how he makes us all think he pushes comedy to the level of of, of absurdity even through controversy so i'm a big dave chappelle fan but growing up I watched television shows like Fresh Prince of Bel Air, and it was the one television show that everybody watched. It didn't matter who you were. So right. I realized that the value of making people laugh and making them feel good was, was something that helped unite people. It was a very uniting building, unite building platform. And so I just always loved it. Amazing, amazing. And I think you talked about it a bit, uh, uh, actually, right, just right now, but what exactly motivated you to pursue that, that education? That higher well, it really, I really wanted to learn. A, a lot of people think, a lot of people go to college to get a job, like they're going to college, they're like, oh, I'm studying accounting just to become an accountant. Right. I'm studying, you know, whatever it is just to become that thing. I actually just wanted to learn. I wanted to learn about the world. I wanted to learn about the the earth that we have, this planet that keeps being consumed by war. And if you want to know, most of us don't really understand why countries do the things they do or how money works or any of these things. And exactly. they never really teach us. Exactly. And the most the most uh the most unifying thing in every country is the law. Mm -hmm. The more educated you are on the law, the better off you're going to be. It's like sure. knowing all the rules to a game. Exactly. So I just wanted to know the rules to the game that I was hoping to play. Amazing. And eventually I wanted to get into, I wanted to maybe get into politics or the law or work at the United Nations or, or do something, just do something to help, help people and yeah. not pretend like I know all the answers, especially when I didn't have all the information. But once I got all the information, and thought I knew all the answers. I was like, yeah, this is this is not it for me. I just, I, I can't be the person that they need you to be to do the things they want you to do. Right. And so I went into comedy and that way I can always be me and I can always be free and hopefully bring smiles to people's faces every chance I get. That's amazing. That's that's beautiful to hear, my friend. Um, so kind of segueing a little bit, uh, did your parents influence you to, to learn Farsi or was that something you were always drawn towards becoming familiar with your Iranian heritage? Well, as far as Farsi goes, honestly, not only am I very proud of my Iranian heritage and culture mm -hmm. and all the traditions, as far as Farsi as the language goes, my father's Iranian. And right. Right. not only is he an extremely proud person, uh, so much so that he named his child Tehran, but more importantly, <laughs> His English wasn't great, so I had to learn how to communicate with him. Oh, I see. That's why I learned Farsi. Like, that's literally the way. It's like, hey, and I wanted to know what everyone was talking when they were talking shit about me behind my back. I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. What you just say? What What you just say? Tehran Chichie? I'm in here. So I learned <laughs> Farsi, but to be very, very, to be very, very frank, Farsi is one of the most beautiful languages on the planet. It is. It's one of the oldest languages still in use, and there are secrets to the universe that are handwritten into the language if you just listen to its poetic and prophetic nature. The mm -hmm. way things are said in Farsi cannot be said in any other language, and that's, that's something that drew me to Farsi as well. That's amazing to hear. So you talked about how the language is beautiful. Um, the food is also great. I wanted to know, are you team? I thought you were going to say the girls, but yeah. The well, the girls are, are beautiful too. too. Why not? It's great. It's great. It's, great. it's all, honestly, honestly, the true Persian culture, mm -hmm. the true Persian culture is absolutely amazing. It's yeah. absolutely beautiful. The idea of good thoughts, good words, good deeds that began in Iran. The Garden of Eden would be in Iran. Mm -hmm. It's a country that has all four seasons at any given time it has mountains and ravines it has lakes it has it has bodies of water it's just an amazing amazing place and an amazing amazing people yeah it is man so i wanted to know are you team khorish cat or team gorma or are you so team 
So it's actually interesting. A lot of people bring that up. And mm. uh, between Khoury Masabzi and Karas. And I don't know who started that. Who even started that question? I don't know. I don't know. That's become a whole thing. It's become a whole thing. But And I don't know why. Because Persian food is amazing. In general, overall. it's agreed. Yeah, in general. It's, it's amazing. Great. But the answer is Khoury Masabzi. If you like Khoury Masabzi, you're a serial killer. Like, no one <laughs> likes Khoury Masabzi. Like, Kadavs is like the food you have to eat because you ran out of Khoury Masabzi. Right. It's like, it, it tastes like depression. Like, why are we even <laughs> eating Kadavs? Like if you went somewhere, if you went somewhere with a with a with a girl or a boy or whatever, yeah. and yeah. you were out, out and you were trying to date this person and they were like, Hey, can I have some celery? You'd look at them like, Are you a psycho? Right. Like who just gets celery? <laughs> exactly. So let's uh let's put that to rest. You yeah, know? definitely Gorma Sabzi. That's my favorite. Gorma Sabzi all the way. Like if you like cataphs, like I'm not saying you can't eat cataphs. No, yeah. I understand what but you mean. But if you like, like, if you're going out of your way to eat quarters to cat abs, hey. then you're going to go out of your way to murder and hide a body <laughs> all the time. Like, that's really who you are. Warm <laughs> Sabzi is the most delicious right. food ever. <laughs> Period. You know, it is delicious, especially with Tadiq. Oh, 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 good. I don't like Tadiq, but yes, it's amazing. Okay. I don't like I don't like the crunchiness. It gets in your teeth. It stabs you in your True. in your in your mouth. It's like ah, it's like wow. yeah. Oh, okay. Okay, that's fair. Fair enough. But I, but I appreciate people who like Taddy. Like, if you like Taddy, you're still Thank a good you. person. Thank if you, you like Hoodish and Cat Ops, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I see. That's a, that's great. So I actually was was researching, and you were talking about in a podcast how you wanted to become a philosopher when you were a kid. Tell me that story, and how do you kind of see it playing as one? Like, how does being a comedian is a philosophy in itself? You well, said that's... great comedy makes you think, so I wanted to see. Yeah. Uh... You know, good comedy makes you laugh. Great comedy makes you think. Exactly. Right. And I did. I wanted. I, there was a time where I was reading all these books from like uh, so many different people. Period. Like I, it doesn't even matter what kind of uh, what kind of philosophy. It was like I was reading Plato and Socrates and people like Alucina, and I was like listening to their words and uh, Al Biruni and all these people, and I was like wow, I love being able to think the idea that I think, therefore I am. We need more of that in the world. And I wanted to be a philosopher. And I was like, wait, what, what is a modern day philosopher? It's either two things. Either you're a homeless guy at, the, at a corner just yelling, or you're a comedian. And so mm -hmm. comedy is really just modern day philosophy, if you really think about it. I see. Yeah, that, that, that's true. That's true. That's true. I, I totally agree with you. So now that you've been in this comedy industry for 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 a while now what are your goals in this industry because i wanted to pull up a tweet actually you posted on twitter a couple of days ago you said i'm a persian black guy named tehran whose family's half muslim half jewish and how has drake not put me in the song lyric yet i had to bring it up because we're, we're, i'm from toronto i had to pull drake into of the course song. the six uh <laughs> shout out to shout out to my boy aubrey graham who, who's dealing with all the things he's dealing with right now exactly. and still coming out on top uh, Drake, like Drake's father is like a very close friend of mine. Drake's my boy. I just feel like I should be in a Drake lyric. Like Drake yeah. needs to drop a, a Tehran line. Like I yeah. know, I know he did the the way I ran shit. You would think I was Iranian. And yeah. then of course, <laughs> Iranians who don't listen to rap are like, it's Iranian, not Iranian. It's like, yo, obviously you need to listen to rap a little more. Right. It's just the right. way you say things. It's how it works. Trust me, Drake knows it's Iranian. Drake is a very worldly person. Exactly. I just need to also be in the Drake lyric. Like, it can't just be lyrics adjacent because there's a lot mm -hmm. of rap songs that I've actually been a part of or, or inspired because of my association with them. You know, a lot of rappers drop Iran or Persian or whatever it is. And honestly, it's because I'm around them so much and I'm introducing them to Iranian things. Even the rapper DMX, a lot of people don't know about this, but DMX's manager, Puzzo, mm -hmm. was actually Iranian. He was Iranian. Oh, really? And exactly. And his, his, his uh, Mazi, who was, who was uh, in charge of marketing at Def Jam and all these people, also all Iranian. So I'm the one who took DMX to his first Persian restaurant because wow. he's in New York. And at the time, there weren't a lot of Persian restaurants in New York. So when he came to D.C., 
I took them to a Persian restaurant with everybody. And just like, it's about introducing people to that culture and bridging the gap like I'm always about. So there's mm -hmm. a lot of, lot of hip hop influences when in, in the American culture that basically celebrate being Persian or give props to being Persian or Iranian. Mm -hmm. And sometimes, a lot of times I'm behind that. I put together a song with Snoop Dogg and a Persian artist named Amatis, and then that developed into Snoop Dogg wanting to do a song with Audash, and that's how we got mm -hmm. that song. Like right. <laughs> the idea is to always be connecting because we're all way more alike than we are different. No, I and totally agree with you. Yeah. I just need to be in a Drake line. Like I feel like Drake needs to say something about Tehran, you know, yeah, my see. man Tehran from Ehran, something. <laughs> he could do something, you yeah. know. Uh, I'm not talking about like the city of Tehran. I'm talking about like something like yeah. You know, I took Tehran to Toronto. You yeah, know, something. something like that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <No>? Toronto. <laughs> yeah, that would be he so. He's black, but he's from Iran, though. Like, come on, Drizzy, Drizzy. Yes, <laughs> yeah, can do this. No, he can definitely do it. Hopefully, in the future, foreseeable future for sure. Exactly. So I wanted to also talk about. I think this was a while ago. But I wanted to know, how was the, because you were the voice of Winnie the Pooh. How was that experience for you? Well, actually, it was supposed to be a Disney reboot of Winnie the Pooh. And okay. it never went on, it never got aired on television. Oh, but it was a Disney that. experience. And then recently, yeah. I was part of a project at Disney, uh, voicing for what was going to be actually a Persian, Persian movie. Uh, oh. Not a Persian, like, in Farsi language, but Persian-based uh, type Disney cartoon that was going to be amazing. So there's a lot of amazing things that are coming out. And I feel like a lot of Iranians are influencing the culture and bringing things around because in the recent years, Iran and Iranians have gotten a bad rap. They've gotten a bad rap because of all the political stuff. And it's like, mm -hmm. hey, Iran has always and will always be its people, not its government. So please pay attention to the amazing Iranian people who have, by the way, been extremely influential and wonderful and fantastic all over the world. Right. From CEO of Uber to the creator of eBay going <laughs> all the way down. Like everywhere you look, there's uh, uh, Melanie Asani is one of the greatest designers of our time, Iranian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, we just have amazing Iranian people who are influencing pop culture trends sure. and the zeitgeist, and they need to be highlighted more too. For sure. I totally agree. I, I, I couldn't agree more with yeah. you. They, we they have, have these stories like about Greek gods, and we have these stories about like Roman, what about Roman empires? What about the Persian empire? What about uh, Persian fairy tales and Rostam and all these people that we should be talking about? They're, they're mm -hmm. just as if not even more so influential. The no, idea of human rights comes from Iran. These are things that the world, the people need to know, not just Persian rugs and Persian cats, but truly understand Persian people. Yeah. And all of the other ethnicities that are within Iran, because Iran is not just Persian. Iran is so many different diverse ethnicities all in one. And that's where uh, Iran get, gets its greatest strength. Yeah, honestly, I couldn't agree with you more because like some people come up with their own ideas of what Iran is, but they don't know that deep down we have, you know, rich history and so much civilization, you know, and how we come about and, you know, we had a royalty and so much, you know, culture um, and still continue to have that culture. Um, it's it's amazing to, to, to be a part of this, you know. Uh, community and of course my background is Persian so uh, I can't and that's actually why I love Toronto because the Persian kids and the Iranian kids in Toronto mm -hmm. are holding it down when you go to places like Toronto Vancouver Montreal <laughs> Ottawa Calgary there's like mm -hmm. these Persian populations that are just very influential in the region and those kids are doing amazing things I'm from DC mm -hmm. and a lot of us in DC are holding it down the a ra radio job on is from DC. Right, right, right. You know? yeah, yeah. So it's like we're just like doing things, and and even though we we are all part of this diaspora that left the country, and and I and the biggest shout out I give are to the kids from inside Iran, not just the ones doing a lot of things, and of course, creating 
you know, community, but the people who are creating art, the people who are creating music from inside Iran, the, the rappers inside Iran uh, who are really doing big things. Like, I'm like, wow, you know, yeah. like, this is a so big deal. Talent. So much exactly. talent in that country. So much talent. And it's it's so sad to see, like, they don't get to showcase it, you know, to exactly. the world. Exactly. Like, and even until if they, they do, get, it's, it gets taken down quickly. I'm like, exactly. No. Unless they get, they get arrested you know exactly. unless they get arrested we don't really hear about them and even then um you know it's like what's going on there's a whole there's a whole we always love to look at the past but there's a whole future when it exactly. comes to you for sure like you like you're the future thank you, know? you. okay so it's what's up. Sure. yeah yeah thank you so i can tell from 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 everyone here in toronto Tehran, we all love you so much for what you I do appreciate all the Persian kids. I'm talking about from everyone from and Markham, Richmond Hill, the cities we have here in Toronto, Markham, Richmond Hill. All the Persian kids love you, Tehran. Like you are our idol growing up. Oh, I appreciate it. Means, it means it. so like, much for me to have you on the show. Thank you. <laughs> they always they always show me so much um they always show me so much love, you know, when I come to sure. when I come to Canada. For sure. Always show me so much love, and hopefully I'll be back even more. So hopefully I'll be doing shows there, just yeah. getting out there, because I love connecting with the the groups of Iranian youth from all mm -hmm. all around the world. And by the way, when it comes to Canada, you have a whole group of people who are holding it down, like Puban, creating music that's just like <laughs> right. out, out of this world. Like I just love what's going on in the Re Iranian community. And the only thing I wish is I wish there was more unity. I wish there was sure. more unity within sure. the community, the mm -hmm. idea of people coming together. And I feel like the young people are, and sometimes it's the older generation that's trying to keep us apart. Like the young generation yeah. is trying to get unified. They are saying the same things in the same way with the same plans in mind. And it's all positivity moving forward. What can we do? How can we fix? How can we build? How can we connect and that's what it really should be all about it honestly should be all about that for sure for sure uh, my second last question Tehran um do you like being more on tour like touring around or do you like posting videos or just personal videos about yourself or or, or, or both play tandem you know honestly I love touring mm -hmm. because it gets me to go to places I would never have gone otherwise or be around people I might not have ever met I always love it. And even though there's all these flights and all these hotel rooms and all this early mornings and late nights, I don't, we don't have to do this. We get to do this. So it's amazing that I get to do this. Mm -hmm. And as far as videos go, I know I need to post more. Sure. <laughs> and more, And that's something that I do have in mind. Mm -hmm. I, I love when people come to my live show so they get an experience because I'm really, to be honest, I'm actually a one-on-one -on -one person. Like when I'm at my show, it's, I love, talking to people like I'm talking to just them. So that's the thing, but I do need to put more things online and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And thankfully the videos that I have done, especially the ones with meaning, they've gone they've gone viral, they've gone around the world and you know, it's not about listen to me, it's more importantly about just listen, you know? Don't listen to me as in do what I say, just listen to what I have to say and maybe It'll add to what you were thinking or maybe challenge something you were thinking, or maybe it'll even confirm something you were thinking. Exactly. That's how it should be. And so I be. love doing videos. I love touring. Amazing. But if I had to choose, I would just stay home and stay in my bed all the time. <laughs> I would Netflix and chill by myself. Like I'd be like, yo. Why not? That's a great, yeah. uh, that's a great rabbit hole to get yourself in. hundred <laughs> percent. Don't let me go down a YouTube rabbit hole exactly. and learn about random things. Like, why? <laughs> Why do I know everything about Argentina? Why? <laughs> <laughs> well, Tehran, it was great having you on the show. Final question. Um, what advice do you have for people like me who want to get into this media industry and want to get into comedy, um, no matter what their racial background is? What What should they do to get, get into this industry? Honestly, the first thing is to just do it. That's mm -hmm. the one thing that people forget. And Nike tells us all the time, just do it. Don't overthink it. Don't plan forever and not do right. something. Like you're in a room right now, Daniel, right? Sure. You're in a room. How far is the door from you to the room that you're in? How far is it? Like two steps. 
two steps. So if you got up and ran there right now, how long would it take you to go? Leave the room. How long? Two seconds. If you walk there, how long would it take you? A second or five right. seconds. F five seconds. You ran there two seconds. You walked there five seconds. If you crawled on your hands and knees, it might take you 10 seconds. Right. But if you sit in that chair and never move towards that door, you know how long it'll take you to get there? Forever. You will Forever. never yeah. get to the door. That's exactly. what most people do is they just sit in their chair and keep looking at somewhere they want to go or someplace they want to be, and they just never do it. They mm -hmm. never get up and go. So my first piece of advice is to get up and go. Mm -hmm. that, it, that'll start it all off. The second piece is practice makes perfect. There are no shortcuts in life. Sure, there are opportunities and ways to get around things, but shortcuts always leave you short chain. So practice hard. It doesn't matter who you are, whether you want to be in the NBA or you want to be a, a doctor, just practice. Just get that practice. Anything you do, that's how you perfect it. And last but not least is don't let anyone or anything stand in your way, especially yourself. And that's the number one obstacle that we have. It's not our family. It's not our friends. It's not strangers. It's not our economic status. It's not how much money we have in the bank. It's not even having a car or being able to catch a bus. It's honestly our own heads getting in our own way and us standing and blocking ourselves and blocking our own blessings. So don't that's block true. your own blessings. Yeah, well, that's amazing. Get out, get out and get something, you know? Exactly. exactly, my friend. That's amazing advice. Thank you for sharing this. And you can reach out to Tehran through his Instagram and Twitter. I'll put all his social handles down below in the description so you can connect with him if you want to. Thanks so much for coming on the show, Tehran. You don't know how much this means to me. This is my childhood oh, dream come true. Good, man. I Thank appreciate you. you. I had a great time talking with you. Thank Merci. you. Merci. Merci, Daniel June. Hold on. <laughs> Before I go, is Daniel your real name? Or is Daniel's that your real name. name. Daniel's okay. Name. I like that for you, you know? Because yeah. there's a lot of people like their names are Danush and, or, you know, it's like. No, my like, name's Daniel. Daniel. My name's Daniel, but in Farsi, they, people call me Daniel. Daniel. Yeah, yeah, I love that. That's what's <laughs> up. It's a great name. And thank this is a great you. podcast. Make sure everyone tune into The Danny Show. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you all for watching this special episode. Thank you, Tehran, for coming. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Tehran, Tehran. <laughs>